Thank you for tuning in to this overview of the Longitudinal Employer Household Dynamics. The Longitudinal Employer Household Dynamics program began in the late 1990s within the U.S. Census Bureau. Its innovative approach was using administrative data to, in order to develop information about employers and workers across the country, again, using administrative data, a unique feature of the LEHD program is its ability to create information by employer characteristics and employee demographics. So we look at the next slide, we have a quick overview of the LEHD program. Again, the innovation is leveraging administrative data to produce statistics at low cost or no cost to those individuals that provide the data. The LEHD program relies on two primary inputs, establishment or employer data and individual wage record information on workers within the states of the United States. We partner with the labor market information bureaus of the states in the country who provide this information to us on a quarterly basis. The image in the middle, the blue three-pronged image, shows that we use the establishment or firm data. We use the jobs data, which is the wage records on individuals. And then we have person data. That person data comes from various other census surveys and other federal administrative record data, including the Office of Personnel Management, and more recently, the Internal Revenue Service W-2 forms. So we use that information within LEHD, again, to produce information by demographics of individuals and also by the employer characteristics. The image on the top right, the job to job hires by race, we'll get to the job to jobs later in the presentation. But we can see that we can look at hires data by race and the lower graphic looks at individuals of where they live versus where they work. So we use administrative data and produce partially synthetic data on residence information to determine to the best of our ability estimates of inflows and outflows of particular geographies. There are five core products in the LEHD program, the quarterly workforce indicators, the LEHD origin destination employment statistics or loads, which is where the synthetic data comes in on residence versus workplace. Job to job flows, which is where we look at variations of industry to industry movements within the workforce. And two experimental data series, the post-secondary employment outcomes and the veteran employment outcomes. Note that the term experimental is a census designation, essentially identifying a particular data series or product that is still kind of in the research and development environment. Again, experimental is the term used by census. Let's first look at the quarterly workforce indicators, which is essentially the basis of the LEHD program and its data set. The key understandings of the key uses of this is understanding the nature of the workforce, hiring trends, demographic information of workers, where's the growth, where's the decline. There are two applications that are available to get into the quarterly workforce indicators data. One is the QWI Explorer, and the other is the LED Extraction Tool. We attempt within the LEHD program to offer applications that are of the most use to a varied customer base and consumer base. So the QWI Explorer is a much more visually driven application, and you can see by the nature here of drop-down menus and so forth, that you can actually go in and select certain criteria to look at the information. The LED extraction tool is still a visual um, application, but it relies on more of a step-by-step -step basis. And I've just given you a, a little taste here on what the LED extraction tool requests. You will see that there are a total of 32 quarterly workforce indicators available through the LEHD program, five measures of employment, 13 measures of individual employment changes, eight measures of establishment employment changes, and six measures of earnings data. I note that the bold red is my addition to the graphic. It is not part of the LED extraction tool. How is this information 
most readily used by our consumers. Here's an example of a very recent request that we received from a member of Congress who is interested in looking at the overall declines state by state in travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation. Using the publicly available quarterly workforce indicator data on beginning of quarter employment, we were able to look at each state across the country and look at their employment declines. Note that the employment declines are as a share of the total state employment, recognizing that in states such as California and Texas, where the population is incredibly large, the absolute decline in employment would overshadow the impact for that particular state. So again, this is all using publicly available data, and we see after considering this population size, I'm sorry, not the population size, the overall employment size, we see that in states such as Vermont, Nevada, and Hawaii, we see a much more dramatic impact. This information is also available at very granular levels of geography. In this particular case, we use the same definition of the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation industry, but we've looked at a specific county in Florida, Orange County, Florida. Of note, Orange County, Florida is home to Walt Disney World. We see that we have a nearly 7.3% decline year over year in the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation employment. Of note is the demographic information available within LEHD. We can look at those declines by sex. We can look by age. We can look by race. We can look by ethnicity. We also have the ability to look by educational attainment and other demographics. So this slide is meant to make the uh, point that LEHD is not just a national project or national program, it is a state-based and sub-state program. Moving to the next core element in LEHD, we have the LEHD Origin Destination Employment Statistics, or LOADS. LOADS uses information on where people work, which is the linkage between the wage record and the establishment data. And then we also draw on administrative data on residents, primarily from tax records, but also other information such as responses to the American Community Survey, where we use partially synthetic data to make estimates of individuals' workplace versus their residents. We have replicated the image from the title slide or the second slide, looking at the inflow and outflow in York County, Pennsylvania. The primary application for accessing loads data is the On the Map application, which I have included kind of the opening screenshot of On the Map, whereby you put in a particular name of the geography and then you begin the analysis. The image on the left side of the screen, the analysis settings, shows you what types of options are available for information coming out of the loads application, the loads data using the On the Map application. I want to, in the next slide, I'm going to show you what the area profile can provide. Now, I want to note that this is not actually what the area profile looks like. I have consolidated the information to showcase what elements are available through the profile. The criteria used in this profile is in the center of the image, with the analysis type being an area profile, the year of 2018, and the selection area of Orange County, Florida. So what we look at here is we can look at total private jobs, we can look at the distribution by age category, earnings categories, sex, race, ethnicity, educational attainment, and also the industry distribution of jobs within the Orange County, Florida area in 2018. LEHD is information that can be used to then move into another area of research or other access to other, area, other data useful in your economic and workforce analysis. It is information in and of itself, but it also can be used as a gateway or an opportunity to investigate additional data. LEHD is also very proud and encourages the use of its data in other applications developed by other individuals. What we see here is a comparison of an on-the-map view of accommodation and food services employment in 2018 for Orange County, Florida. This is a direct snapshot from the loads application on the map. On the right, we see an individual, her name is Robert Manduka, who took the loads data from 2014 and developed a proprietary map 
of all jobs across the country. In this example, we hone in on the Orlando, Florida area, and each dot represents a job. So we strongly encourage the, the use of the LEHD data in other applications. What we ask, though, is to share that information with us because we are interested in growing the LEHD program and its applications. So we seek to learn from as much, learn as much from our users as they learn from us. A third core product that we're going to touch on is the job to job flows, where we look at hires and separations by the worker's origin and destination, either by industry, sorry, by industry and their employment characteristics. So many workforce development and economic development professionals are interested in where do the jobs go? Where do people go when they leave one industry to go into another industry? So the Job to Job Explorer is the primary application by which you can access the Job to Job Flows data. The image on the upper right is the guided entry. What we have done is tried to make this as seamless as possible for our users to start to acclimate themselves to the Job to Job Flows data. So we ask some, kind of some leading questions. Are you looking at separations or hires? What's your geography of interest? Do you have an industry of interest? Then we actually provide an opportunity for the type of analysis that you're interested in doing. Do you want to do separations over time? Are you interested in transition of states, industries, metro areas? If you are absolutely unsure or new to the job and job flows data, we also provide some leading questions at the bottom of the guided entry. These are designed to, again, get you into the data quickly and begin to create an understanding of what type of information is available and how it can be useful. The image on the left here is a screenshot from the Job to Job Explorer. Again, the bold red type is my edition of what this is. It's Job to Job flows from the construction industry in New York, Hanover, Pennsylvania area to five industries for two different quarters, 2019 quarter three and 2019 quarter four. So you can see the flow of individuals who go from construction to other industries in two different time periods. Uh, what I want to truly note here is at the top of that chart, you see options. Again, LEHD program, we try, strive to make as many options available for our consumers because we want to make sure to cover the greatest variation in how consumers want to use the information. So we have an option for a table generation, line charts, bar graphs, thematic maps, bipartite uh, presentations, or matrix presentations. So again, this is an example to show you the availability of data in job to jobs flow, but also the variation in how that information can be returned to you as a consumer. The next two slides showcase the experimental data series that I mentioned in the introduction. The first of these two is the post-secondary employment outcomes, or PSEO. PSEO is not unique in the sense of providing information of connections between an individual's academic program of study and their employment outcomes. There are some aspects of PSEO that do make it unique from other products and publications available. One is the longitudinal or historical nature of PSEO. Our current PSEO Explorer can provide earnings outcomes for one year post-graduation, five years post-graduation, and 10 years post-graduation. Like PSEO could not exist without the participation of the overwhelming majority of labor market information bureaus across the country. Unlike many longitudinal systems that are based within a particular state, PSEO can capture the employment and earnings outcomes of individuals who leave the particular state of the educational institution to pursue their career. In this example, I have chosen the Pennsylvania State University baccalaureate levels, showcasing all of the cohorts we have for Pennsylvania State University at this time. And I've chosen a comparison of economics majors versus statistics majors. What we see here from a career planning perspective is evidence to suggest that the median income of statisticians is higher than that of economists majors one year after graduation. But what we see is over time that gap is closed and 10 years post-graduation, essentially individuals with economics degrees and individuals with statistics degrees are essentially equivalent in the marketplace from an earnings capacity. The lower image here 
showcases another aspect of PSEO that really sets it apart from other types of applications that connect graduates to employment outcomes, and that is the geographic distribution of graduates. We see, see here that mathematics and statistics baccalaureate graduates from Pennsylvania State University, you see the industry composition is quite varied, but also the geographic distribution also is quite varied. Pennsylvania sees roughly a little less than half of graduates stay in Pennsylvania one year post-graduation, and then we see the geographic dispersion of all other graduates. We can do this one year post-grad, five years, and 10 years. What we see in many cases is shifts in graduates from ge geography, geographic distribution across the country. There are much more um, opportunities to look in detail the PSEO data. I would encourage you to spend some time and explore the PSEO Explorer to see what it can show for you. The other experimental data product that we have made available is the Veteran Employment Outcomes, or VEO. The VEO is a collaborative partnership between Census and at present the U.S. Army, whereby the Army provides us with discharge information at the individual level. Those individuals who are discharged by the Army, we then can align them to their private employment and private earnings. The image to the right shows us what we can do when we look at the information by their military occupation specialization, or MOS. This is how the individual was, the occupation of the individual within the Army, and then what we see are the private employment earnings um, for the individuals once they are discharged from the Army. On the left, we have another image where we look at geographic aspects of veterans of the Army. We see here that the District of Columbia seems to provide greater earnings potentials than five other states. Note that these five states were chosen largely by their large concentrations of Army in the, uh, the Army in those particular states. It's not a reflection of any other aspect other than the U.S. Army says there are this many people in this state that are actually um, in the Army. So that's the reason for choosing that. I do want to point out that there is another product that has come out of the LEHD infrastructure on the Map for Emergency Management. The loads data is included in on the Map for Emergency Management as is a very large array of other census data population data and other characteristics. The on the map for emergency management, largely a tool to determine or analyze the impacts of particular emergency declarations or disasters, floods, winter weather across the country. I have chosen to hone in on Missouri only because this area seems to provide a lot of event types for this particular time period in late March. So one can click on any one of those events to see more detailed impact or affected population information and other census data available. Again, on the map for emergency management, much like LEHD, provides a gateway for researchers to explore additional data or understand the context of, of the research or question that they are seeking to answer. So in this regard, on the map for emergency management can provide a great opportunity to have a real-time focus on an area and see what information is available through census to understand what the potential impact of the particular event is through on the map for emergency management. I want to thank you for taking the time today to listen to this presentation, encourage you to visit our landing page, which is listed on the screen. We also have various email addresses for specific feedback on any of the products, so you will see this listed on the screen. Again, thank you for your time. It has been a pleasure. Please contact us with any questions or suggestions for improvement to the LEHD program. We look forward to hearing from you and hearing your feedback. Thank you.